I'm here with John Oltsek, and today we're going to be sharing some thoughts on a cybersecurity reference architecture. And John, we recently completed some market research on the notion of enterprise cybersecurity vendors. And in that research, we asked organizations about their move to an architecture, the perspective on platforms. And you've been writing in your Network World blog about the notion of a cybersecurity operations and analytics platform architecture. What's behind that? Why the need for that kind of architecture? What are the business drivers? Yeah, Doug, uh, so we're calling it SOPA. Enterprise organizations need to know what assets are on their network. They need to know the status of those assets. They need to know how those assets are behaving. Uh, they need to know how those assets are behaving in relation to one another. And then they need to make decisions on how those assets are behaving in relation to one another to understand if that's malicious behavior, suspicious behavior, and what actions they take. And that's a scalability issue, that's a data analytics issue, that's a command and control issue. And the, the tools that we've used historically have been sort of point tools, isolated, so we can make decisions in isolation, but we couldn't make decisions based on the context of everything that's going on and everything that's changing. And that's, that's driving this need for an architectural solution, a software architectural solution, SOPA, and we're seeing that behavior in uh, large enterprises. So that's why we're, we're covering it, and that's why our research says that uh, this is happening. Absolutely. So a tremendous amount of telemetry to get more visibility, but at the end of the day, we need context. Otherwise, we just have events. Visibility, but also, what do I do with that visibility? Yeah. Uh, what level of risk can I take? When do I have to respond to a priority alert? And when can I um, downplay that? We just don't have the, the proper infrastructure to do that. And we do see companies uh, building new types of security operations centers. So again, the demand is there. We need an architectural solution to fulfill that demand. Sure. And so SOPA provides a level of efficiency then to more operationalize existing use cases. What are, what are some of those, those core use cases and how does that fit into sort of a next generation SOC? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's all the kinds of things that we're, we're seeing people doing. It's incident response. It's investigations, it's analytics, it's hunting. Uh, it's, uh, again, it's doing asset, um, any kind of an asset inventory or auditing. And it's being able to do that in real time. It's being able to make decisions. Uh, also, we're seeing more involvement from executives and boards who want to understand risk, who want to understand what's going on. And this is a means of doing that. Uh, also, everything's changing in the enterprise. We've got cloud, we've got IoT, yeah. and therefore uh, we need to keep up with that and, again, make decisions in real time. So a future-ready architecture, so as more devices are connected online, the architecture is ready, more workloads go to the cloud. But I imagine um, there's a lot of scale involved here. We're talking a ton of data. We need to um, be able to perform real-time analytics. So what about the cloud as a delivery platform for a SOPA implementation? Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. And um, just given the amount of scale and the amount of compute that we may need, yeah, the cloud has to play a role. Now, it may play an archival role for storage. It may be involved in a distributed data management architecture. Or it could, uh, I mean, if we're doing analytics on terabytes and terabytes of data, we may need the horsepower of the cloud to do analytics there. And, um, and a lot of this will be kind of historical big data analytics as well as real-time type of analytics. So yeah, absolutely, the cloud will play a role. And I would expect Amazon and, and Microsoft and IBM and Google and others to get involved here. Sure. And Threat Intel is obviously part of a SOPA implementation, and the cloud offers a way to sort of centralize that third-party Threat Intel. So you're triangulating what you're seeing internally in your own environment with external factors. Cloud's a good place to do that too, right? Yes, and if you look at the kind of data management and data analytics that people like Facebook and Amazon have, that's the type of scale and that's the type of synthesis of data and decision making of data that we're going to need here. So yeah, absolutely, that fits. Sure. So obviously, a SIM has a, a starring role in a SOAP implementation. What are some other implications to the vendor landscape? Yeah, I would, I would characterize it as this. I think SIM functionality plays a role. But where that SIM functionality lives is sort of in play. That's what an architecture is. Um, but it does mean that there'll be kind of dominant vendors who uh, have SOPA ecosystems. So think of this as sort of like uh, what happened with ERP, with SAP and Oracle and others. Right. Uh, they built an architecture. They built middleware bridges. Mm. Um, they had a lot of the application functionality, but there was a partner ecosystem. There was a services ecosystem. And I think we'll see centers of gravity like that in SOPA 
where you have a lot of smaller vendors who are hitching their wagons to the bigger vendors. Got it. Makes a ton of sense. Yes. So we are now launching a security analytics research project. That's right. And that's going to get us a lot more information on this very topic. That's exactly why we're doing this, because we know this is happening. We don't know the timing. We don't know where people are starting. And we also, what we do know is from talking to people, uh, CISOs, security analysts, they want to do this. They don't know how to do this. Security architecture or software architecture yep. is something that uh, you may know if you're an ERP or an enterprise software architect. You don't necessarily know this if you're a security professional. And so that knowledge transfer has to happen, and that's what we want to research is sure. to see where we are on that maturity curve. Well, it's a highly relevant topic, and it's an expansive one. And we'll be looking at it all year. We'll be looking at it all year. Yeah. So stay tuned for more on SOPA.